If you've been living in your home for many, many years and you initially believed this would be your forever home and now perhaps thinking, is it my forever home? Will I be inheriting this to my children and grandchildren? Or if I sell it and decide to downsize, what are the tax implications? I'm wondering what you know about Prop 19. We had an opportunity to speak with Jennifer Sade from TLD Law, who specializes in all state planning, living trust, and unfolding Prop 19 to really help bring clarity to families. So grab a pen and notepad and get ready to take a lot of notes. Let's dive right in. Okay, did you all get a handout on Prop 19? Yes. Okay. So this handout is actually from what we call the Board of Equalization. It says California State Board of Equalization. They are the folks that put out the rules and how we work with property taxes. That's what Prop 19 is for. Prop 19 was a proposition that was advertised heavily in November 2020 when we were all home and we had the shutdown and nobody was going anywhere. It passed. Prop 19 is a law that does two things. One thing, which is a good thing, is it keeps the base year value for older Californians who buy a new home but are worried that the property taxes are going to go up. It used to be Prop 60 and Prop 90. It combined that, and it made it effective in all Californian counties. So before, if you were over the age of 55 and you lived in a big home, so you had a really nice home in Seal Beach or you had a really nice home in Manhattan Beach and you became an empty nester and you said to yourself, I need to move. This home is too big, but I can't afford to move because my property taxes will go up. And I don't want my property taxes to go up for my next purchase. So with the old props and in some counties, you were able to move from LA County to Orange County or to San Diego County to buy another property, whether it's on the beach, in the condo, or something smaller. The property might have been more money or less money, and you could transfer the property tax base for what you were paying for on your existing residence for your new purchase. But it didn't work in every California county, and it wasn't very flexible. So Prop 19 that passed and became effective on February 16th, 2021, allows you to fill out a form if you're over the age of 55 and you decide to buy another property, you can carry over your existing property tax formula to the new property. So the hand sheet talks about that and it's on the third page and it talks about examples for base year value transfers. So if you qualify, you can talk to the assessor either in the outgoing or incoming county, fill out the form, and your property tax basis in terms of the formula would remain the same. It's still calculated on the value of the purchase or what the house is worth, but it's the same denominator. So it works to keep your property taxes lower and it encourages um, homeowners that have had a property for many years to freely sell and not have property taxes be a decision and why they would not sell. So it's a good thing. We all like that aspect of what we call Prop 19. But what we don't like, and I think I can say it for everybody, um, is the parent to child transfer reassessment exclusion has largely been eliminated. So that's when we talk about on the street or the grocery store at Target or we're with our friends and we talk about, oh, I have Prop 13. My property taxes don't go up. My base is very low. I have Prop 13. So when I die because of the parent to child transfer, reassessment exclusion, my kid will pay the same property taxes that I pay if they inherit my home. That was pretty much the old law. That was called Prop 58. There was some rules and some gameplay, but most people, if a parent passed away and a child inherited a home, that home would go to the child or children in a trust or in a probate, and the property tax basis would stay exactly the same. 
so long as we filled out the form to explain that it was a parent to child transfer. We all liked it. The folks that didn't like it are the folks that are collecting money for property taxes. So when that ad ran in November 2020, there was a firefighter that showed up on the screen. He didn't have a shirt on, but he had his pants on and he was holding a kitten. And I know you can imagine this. And there were flames behind him. And it said, say the firefighters, give us more money so we can fight the fires to save these animals. Vote yes on Prop 19. So all the voters not understanding that the two components in Prop 19 voted yes. The first component was fine for the base year value transfer. It works. The second component says, can the child transfers are eliminated unless it's the primary home of the parent and the primary home of a child. Most children don't live in the same house as their parents. Some parents own lots of property in California, so it's only the primary home, not the investment property, not the rental property, not the vacation home. When you pay your property taxes now, the county already knows what your primary home is. They know where you vote. They know where your license is issued. They know on your property tax bill which of the properties that you own has the homeowner's exemption. They already know. So when you pass away, we have to tell the county, that's your home because they already know. And then you have to fill out a form within a year of someone's passing to say that this is also your home. And if the county knows that you own your own home because you take the homeowner's exemption somewhere else, because you have to put in your social security number and your identification information, the county will not approve the parent to child reassessment exclusion and the property taxes will go up. When parents pass away, most of the time the properties are sold, which is fine. Under the old prop, we were able to keep the property tax basis to be the same from date of death until we sell it. So there was no increase. Now, when properties are being sold, the minute someone dies and until you close escrow, there's going to be a supplemental tax bill for the difference. The properties are going to be reassessed the market value. And because the counties are behind, partly because of COVID, partly because of this law, you are not going to figure out what your new property tax bill is until after you sell it and about a year later. You will get a surprise bill in the mail. It'll be bright red and a bigger envelope and it will say supplemental taxes and it will say due in 30 days and it will be a large amount of money. If your parents bought the house, say 1970 for $20,000 and they paid $1,000 a year in property taxes, that's great. You can pay that bill until you sell it because that's all the county knows. But when you pass away and your children go to sell the property and let's say they sell it for a million dollars, your property taxes are gonna go up to market value. And in that million dollar property, when in one, 0.25% of the assessed value of that million plus any assessments that has been voted in that property area, school district bonds, road repair, or whatever, it's about 1.25%. So that $1,000 property tax bill is no longer going to stay the same. It will go up to about 12000 a year, and it will be prorated. So if mom died in January, and you don't close escrow until next December, you're going to get a supplemental tax bill for the difference about a year later. It's hard to understand because when you sell property and you go through escrow, they probate property taxes, but they do it at the old rate because that's the only information that the escrow knows. The county has not done its job to reassess the property. And then when you close escrow, you wind up with money and you distribute it to the kids or to the nieces or the nephews and you give it away like you're supposed to in the trust. And now you get a bill that you didn't expect a year or two later and you have to pay. So now we're asking clients or we're informing them if the assessment hasn't come back 
you can't distribute all the money. You have to hold enough to pay that bill because it is going to come. And those bills can be fast and furious and expensive. So let's slow down. Before Prop 19 was enacted, if someone died before February 16, 2021, we used the old law. If those forms still out there, and if it's a parent to child transfer, it does not matter if it's a primary home or investment property, almost all the properties are not reassessed. So if somebody died a couple years ago, we use the old system. If somebody died in 2021 on February 16th or after, we use the new system. And the new system says that it must be the primary home of the parent and the primary home of one of the children. So someone has to be living there or plan to move in within a year of date of death. And the county is on to you if you want to play some games. Because when you fill out these forms and you put in your name and address and social security number, they know if you've already owned property in California. And if you are claiming something else as your primary residence, they will call you and figure out, are you really planning to move in? So it creates the incentive to start selling all the properties because you can't afford to keep them. So let's say mom had a home and then she moved into a nursing home for the last 10 years of her life. And that home got converted to a rental property to help pay for the nursing home. It is no longer mom's primary residence. They know this because of the way that you file taxes. So if you decide to move back into mom's home after she passes, you can't say that it's her primary residence because on the death certificate, it doesn't even say that address. So there's all these little things that kind of connect. And the county assessor goes, I'm not going to approve this form to say that the property tax should not go up. So you have to be careful to understand how the law works. First, the primary home of a parent who actually lived in the property and perhaps died in the property. And if they did move into a rehab or a facility that it was a short-lived stint and not something that was more permanent. And then an adult child has to sign a form within a year saying that they moved in. They have to fill out the homeowner's exemption within a year of date of death, but they can fill out the Prop 19 form itself within three years. So there's a conflict. The law has now actively been enforced, so the attorneys are starting to see what we consider blowback from the assessor. They're calling us and they're saying, this has been a parent to child transfer. This doesn't work. We're not going to approve it. Attorneys don't make the laws. You do collectively as citizens. So when you vote for a prop in front of Target or Walmart and you sign and then you go to the polls, you say yes or no. The general public has become the lawmaker. So you have to be careful because you're making laws that you don't understand how they work. We also have lawmakers in Congress and in the Senate and in the state and the federal, and they make laws too. I don't make any laws. I just help you through them. So when I deal with parent to child transfers, property taxes and all of that stuff, all I can do is tell you what to expect, what I think could happen, but I can't guarantee the result. So every time I deal with a parent to child transfer and I don't want property taxes to go up, I have to tell the client, I will fill out the forms with you, prepare them for you to sign. I will send them to the assessor by certified mail. I will make sure that they get them. The assessor will email me if they need a death certificate or more information, and I will work with them. But I am not the assessor. The assessor follows the guidelines from the state of California, from the California Board of Equalization. They develop the handbook the policies and procedures, and they give the guidelines for different assessors on how to do reassessments of that. Every time someone buys a property in California, the assessor considers that an automatic change of ownership. And when it's a change of ownership, property taxes go up. So every time escrow, an agent, an attorney, or someone records a deed to a new owner, to a trust, to a child, 
to an LLC and the property is being transferred, there is a form that gets attached to that deed. It's called a preliminary change of ownership report. You have to tell the assessor what you're doing and you're signing it under the penalty of perjury. So if you're putting property in a trust, it's not a change of ownership, but you have to check the box. If you are transferring property from your name to an entity that you've created, you check the box and it's not a change of ownership. But if the property is going from mom who passed away to an adult child, that's considered a change of ownership unless they meet the qualifications for Prop 19. Prop 19 has, you fill out the preliminary change of ownership report. We call it a PCOR. We fill it out, the assessor gets it. We fill out another form called death of real property owner. You're required by law to report. If you're the trustee or the executor or someone handling the affairs of somebody who passed away, by telling the assessor that a property owner has died, you fill out the form and on the form it asks, who's going to be the anticipated new owner? And they have a box down at the bottom and you write down the next of kin, who's going to be getting this property? Whether it's the kids, grandkids, charity, niece, son, and you put down percentages, you have to send it in. And then if it qualifies for the new Prop 19 parent to child transfer, then we fill out the Prop 19 reassessment exclusion application saying this implies, please exclude my property from being reassessed. And then we have to send in another form saying that this is actually my home and please consider the homeowner's exemption on the form. Now the homeowner's exemption is a small tax break that deducts the assessed value that the county comes up with. It reduces it by about $7,000. So if the county says that your home is worth a million dollars in assessed value, and you put in the homeowner's exclusion form, it brings down the assessed value to $993,000. And your property tax bill is down by a hundred bucks. That's just how it works. But that's how they gauge that is worthy of being excluded from the assessment. Now, these props keep changing. Because you go to Target and when the guy comes to you and says, sign here so I can get a dollar and you sign, you don't understand what you're doing. You're making a law. And now we're dealing with the effect. So I recommend that you don't sign at Target and that when you have a proposition that comes up on the ballot, you don't understand it. Either don't vote yes or no, just leave it blank or vote no. Only vote yes for measures and propositions and things that you actually understand. We were misled by this, I think. Um, I think all of us are kind of upset. We didn't think it would pass collectively. The attorneys didn't put together anything. We talked about it. We said, ah, it takes a while. And it takes a while, like with marijuana, when it became legal. I mean, that went on the ballot many times, so we didn't think anything of it. So in November, 2020, when we were all still home and we were worried about how we we're gonna do Thanksgiving, it passed. So here we are. So the, the reason why I'm telling you all these things and sharing what I think about all this stuff is the law may change again. The legislature in the state of California may say, this is what we really meant. We'd like to fix it. But I can only tell you what it is today. And today means it has to fit this rule box. It's a parent-child transfer, grandparent to grandchild transfer. It has to be the primary home of the person who died. And then it has to be the primary home of the person who's living there. Okay. So now this still applies when let's say you own a home and you say, you know what, I've got a citizenship now in Greece and I'm gonna move back to Greece. Then I'm no longer gonna own property here, but I wanna give it to my kid. And my kid's 20 and he can own the home. We can apply this if the kid is gonna live there. It has to be the primary home of the parent and if the adult child is going to become the new owner, we could do it. And we do them now, and it works. I don't recommend that we do it now to avoid probate or anything, but sometimes in some cases it does work. 
So just understand that when you sign a quit claim deed, we had this the other day, a woman came in and she said, you know, my mom died and then my dad lived by himself and he really couldn't handle being in the home without some adjustments to the bathroom. So I took out a loan for about 50,000 and we remodeled the house to make it more comfortable for dad. We remodeled the bathroom, we put some guard um, rails in and updated the kitchen, did a little bit. So the daughter says, yeah, the lender just put a TN title. And now the property tax bill on that. And I said, would you do that for her? She said, well, I didn't know. Well, the lender doesn't know. The lender doesn't care. The lender's Chase Bank in Indiana. They have no clue. They'll put you on title, run your credit, refinance. And now the county says, hey, this is a change of ownership. You are now on title with your dad's property. You don't live there because I already know that you live somewhere else. So your father's property tax bill for his house is going to go up. And boy, did it go up. So they're sitting in my conference room, both of them crying. And I said, well, you didn't seek legal advice. You didn't talk to me. You didn't talk to Gia. You didn't talk to Carrie. You didn't ask somebody to say, well, what is it that you're doing? And then she looks at me and she goes, well, the bank is supposed to tell me. She said, well, the bank is going to tell me. You need to hire us or have people that are out there to help you understand what you're doing. It doesn't matter to me what you decide to do, but you need to understand the implications of what you've done. So then the lady says to me, well, now I'm entitled with my dad's house. What do I do? I said, there's nothing you can do. I mean, there really isn't anything I can do. You made a mistake without knowing. I did not make the mistake. I didn't do it. If I would have done it for her, the family would have signed waivers and papers, would have had multiple meetings with me to make sure they fully understood what they were doing. So the Prop 19 that passed largely eliminated keeping the Prop 13 tax bases permanently for any parent to child transfer. And it's really affecting how people manage their properties. We had a client the other day that had three adult children. There was about five rental properties um, in Long Beach down by the water. Most of them are apartment buildings. And I said to the family, look, before you decide to keep the properties, none of you live there. You're going to have to factor in that these are $5 million apartment buildings. The property tax bill is going to go up to $60,000 a year. You're not going to be paying the $5,000 that your mom and dad were paying. So it's going to change how this is a good investment or not. You need to run the numbers. So they're going to wind up selling the property. And they're going to sell the properties. And then a new landlord will take over, kick out the tenants, rehab them, charge more rent. And this is the cycle of what they want for Prop 19, is they want more movement in the properties in California. But it's backfiring right now, I think. So the whole point of you sitting here listening to me is making sure that you understand what it is so that when you go out there and you start adding people on title or someone passes away, you understand what's happening. If I had a trick now to avoid a reassessment, I would do it. There isn't one. So here we are. So do we have questions or do you guys want me to talk about something a little bit more? Jennifer, that was fantastic. Um, I actually had a, oh, give me one second. I had a, um, a question also. You mentioned that, yes, this is obviously for primary residents, right? Does it matter what property type, as long as it's primary residence? It could be single family, condo, duplex. Single family and condos are fine. Townhomes are fine. I'm finding duplexes are okay. I'm not sure yet that it's gonna work for a multi-unit apartment building. I have one now where I have a four unit, fourplex, and I have a daughter who actually lives in one of the apartments. And we're trying it, but I can't guarantee that it will work because the assessor doesn't even know. It's my understanding right now, it's basically single family and up to a duplex, and that's it. Got it. Okay. So right now, just, just to clarify, single family is okay, condo, and even duplex. But then when you move on to uh, other property types, it can get a little... Okay, a little it complicated. Moved, yeah, I'd, I'd have to examine the property tax bill to see if there was a homeowner's exemption on it. Um, I'd have to find out did the parent actually live there, and then we would have to do the analysis. We we actually called the assessor and we asked them. Um, but when you ask them, they tell you what they know, but they don't guarantee an opinion for your case. 
So what, what's interesting though with the assessor is that they send things to you. And the things that they send you, it's, it's crazy. It's, it's a little piece of paper. And they take this paper and they fold it and they stick it in the thinnest white envelope. And it has a little watermark on it and it says LA County Assessor and it has a label and it's not really postmarked. And it looks like junk mail. But when you got them and you open it up and it says your property taxes are changing and it has some base value recalculation, you have a short window of time, 60 days to appeal that. So when you get correspondence from the assessor or you're in the middle of transferring property, buying something, inheriting something, or doing a transfer into an LLC or refinancing, and you get a thin piece of paper from the LA or Orange County assessor, you have to open it timely, read it, talk to me or talk to someone because you can file an appeal. You have to file the appeal, which is another piece of paper which is free, you just file it. They set it for hearing a couple of years out. And then that preserves the right for us to protest. And then I can take my time because I know my appeal hearing is 18 months out. I can write to the assessor and to the person that's been assigned to look at this property and talk to them and say, I think there's a misunderstanding or I think it's not a change of ownership. And I can send paperwork kindly with a very nice letter to say, oh, maybe you missed it, you didn't see it. This is the parent child transfer, this is how it works. The assessors don't want things on appeal. They don't wanna have hearings. They don't wanna have cases inside the board of equalization. So if they find that it can work in your favor, I give them something to hang their hat on for them to say yes. They'll say yes and reverse whatever it is in the letter. And then you send a new letter back saying, this is what it is. And if that new letter is what the outcome that you wanted, we've done it. Then we take the appeal off calendar. If the letter or, or approaches don't work, then we just go to the hearing. And the hearing's done on Zoom. The attorney goes with you and we just argue until the case management officer that's listening what's happening and then we see what happens. So the whole point is that the assessor does make mistakes. Sometimes they don't understand the trust or they don't understand the beneficiaries or they made a clerical error and it does happen. I say it happens about 25% of the time. But they don't send me the letter. They send the new property owner the letter. And so when you buy new property, you often get lots of mail. You get coupons from Lowe's, you get junk mail, you get things from security companies, and it's just a lot. And you get things from the assessor. Here's a copy of the deed, here's this, here's that. Well, if you get this little thin letter and it's not quite in English and it says, ooh, your property taxes are being affected, you have to read it, scan it to me or talk to me or talk to Gia Carey or somebody. And they can look at it and say, you know what? This isn't good news. Let's file an appeal to preserve your rights. You get the appeal set. And then we kindly work with the assessor. There's usually an email address on the bottom. And we just email them and say, oh, it looks like you overlooked this. Or this is the page of the trust where it says, and then they go, okay. And they work with us. And then they fix the problem. They do make mistakes. It, it, it's only because they don't understand the transfers that are happening. Their form isn't right. The form didn't get sent to them, the PCOR, the other form. Or they have new people that are working there. Or they're working remote. Or they're in the office. And sometimes they just lose cases. They just lose it. Um, there are so many of these that get reported every day. They get reported electronically. People walk them in. Um, some of these are professionally prepared by escrow, by attorneys. So some are done by the clients themselves. I mean, the assessor and the recorder's office will record a ham sandwich if you sent it to them, you know. So all of this stuff is very delicate. So when a client says to me, or someone who's not a client but had a question, they come in and they go, Oh, you know, by the way, my property taxes went up last year. I said, well, did you get a letter? Oh, yeah, I was on vacation, and then I opened it, and I say, okay, well, what's the date of the letter? Oh, the letter's dated 2022. I mean, you've blown the deadline. There is just nothing I can do. So yeah. we're very careful about parent-child transfers now. We just say it doesn't work. 
you have to argue with me to say it does work. I'm going to move in. It's my house. I live here. Um, sometimes it does work when I have um, young kids that inherit from their dad. The dad lives in the house. The kid's in school in New York. He's going to come back home to California. He does not own property. Um, I can say, you know what? This is his kid's childhood home. He was born in the house. So out the form, I'm not lying. He is going to come back there. He's just not in California today. In those cases, the assessor probably will not reassess because there's nothing there. He doesn't own anything. So it's kind of interesting. But when I deal with all these transactions, the biggest thing is I have to tell the client is I can't guarantee what the outcome is at all. I can just fill out the forms, sit with you, send them in. And the forms are intimidating. We fill them out all day long and they're just not done in English. They try really hard to make it for the layman, but it's hard. That's why we have professionals in this room. We have me, and then we have Gia to sell real estate. We have Carrie that handles money management. And when I work with this team, I only do my part. And I stay in my lane. Carrie does his part and Gia does her part. And we all work together. So that's why it's important to say, you know what? I need to talk to somebody. Talk to an attorney, get a consultation, and we can help you. Um, and we can yes. you know, figure it out. Yeah. There you have it. Everything you need to know about Prop 19. I'm hoping that this brought you so much more clarity to understand if Prop 19 can benefit you. So whether you've been thinking if it's the right time to make a move, if this is going to be your forever home, if this is going to be inherited to your children and grandchildren, just know that as you're planning ahead, it's really important for you to have the right team on your side, a financial advisor, an estate planner, a real estate professional, a CPA. We'd love to understand your circumstances, help you explore all of your options and help you navigate through any process that you decide. If you've enjoyed this video, this interview and want to know more about our work, workshops, make sure you subscribe, like, and comment below. See you next time.